Hey y'all, I know it's been a long time since I put a video together and I've, uh, I've been planning on doing several more, some frequently asked question type stuff. And uh, I figured I'd throw this one together real quick because I've had four or five people just in the last couple of weeks that this one's bitten real bad. And it's the, uh, the PCV system. What is it? How does it work? And more importantly, understanding the fresh air side of it because that seems to be causing most people grief. All right, so for those that don't know, PCV stands for positive crankcase ventilation. The idea behind it is you have a line hooked to manifold vacuum that goes to a PCV valve that has a weighted ball in there usually. They can be different calibrations for, for different weights depending on the motor. The idea behind it is it applies vacuum to the crankcase to suck out any blow by, anything that gets by the rings, and uh, reburns that stuff through the motor. So uh, why do you want it? Why do you care? It's just a stupid emissions device, right? Well, there's actually some really good benefits to it. Um, by, by putting some vacuum inside the crankcase, that allows the rings to seal a little better. That little bit of vacuum um, prevents oil from blowing out like your front case or, or your rear main seal. Um, so it, it prevents oil leaks, but also the, uh, the combustion gases, they get in there and mix with your oil. It really degrades your oil and makes it break down a lot faster. So PCV is actually a really good thing. I don't ever recommend anyone remove it. And since you're watching my channel, you're probably interested in the Mustang or Explorer system. And uh, it's actually really important because it's used in the idle strategy. Um, idle air is everything in these systems for drivability. So uh, I don't ever recommend you remove it, but let's, uh, let's get on to the explanation of how it's plumbed. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lower manifold to drag out. I probably got one packed away somewhere, but since the move, uh, I'm not gonna worry about dragging it out to find it. I also don't have an actual PCV valve to show you. But to explain to you where it is, how it goes, in the lower intake there's usually about an inch, inch and a quarter diameter hole. Underneath that you will see a screen that sort of looks like steel wool or something. It, it's in a little cartridge. And below that you should have a baffle. Both of those are very important because it prevents the PCV from sucking too much oil into the engine. So coming off of this little T here, you would have another piece of rubber hose and then the valve would set in the rubber grommet above that baffle and that screen. People often ask me, well, which, which ports do I hook it to? Well, the truth is I've seen several variations. Um, all of them seem to use this one in the rear corner. Some of them will have a uh, T there and will pass to that front one. The most common I see is this configuration here where it hits this lower corner, tees off, and hits the manifold vacuum in the front there. It seems to be the most common. Like I say, I've seen probably four different variations. But the one thing they all have in common is that all of them seem to use this port. Now, I believe the reasoning for using that port is because that's the lowest part on the intake manifold. As you can see, the, the intake kind of leans back. And using that port lets the oil that it, it might suck out and get into that intake drip back down, back through the PCV valve and back into the crankcase because you don't want to burn excessive oil. Um, you're always going to have some, but if it gets excessive, people put in catch cans and that kind of stuff. Biggest thing is uh, if it gets too bad, it, it's a result of blow by and you, you really need to look into why your engine is allowing so much blow by. So the, the vacuum side of the system is pretty simple to understand. PCV valve in a manifold vacuum, preferably at this T for the whole oil drainage purpose. Um, whether you tee it off and go to other ports, I'm not sure it really matters, just so long as you have manifold vacuum. Um, I think in my Mustang, I'm only running it to this port. I don't have any sort of tee going on. Um, my Bronco set up exactly like this is, just because that's how it was from the factory and that's how I made it work. 
Um, let's talk about the fresh air side of things. All right, so the vacuum side is pulling those vapors out of the crankcase, but you got to have an inlet, otherwise you're just going to put a vacuum under the crankcase and you aren't going to have any fresh air to, to help actually clean those vapors out. So the most common is this set up here. This is a 96 Explorer. The Fox Body Mustangs are done the same. You have your fresh air coming from your air filter, past your mass airflow sensor, and then just before the throttle body, you have this little elbow right here. Well, it lets the fresh air come through into your oil fill nipple. Now, why that's important is because that air that's being sucked out of the, the vacuum side needs to be measured. Well, the way to measure it is you measure the air on the inlet side so that the computer can know how much on the vacuum side it's flowing. That's the reason this hose goes between the throttle body and the mass airflow sensor. Um, if that air isn't measured because you don't have this hose in place, then everything that's being sucked out of the back of that PCV valve is just a big giant vacuum leak. And it can cause everything from starting and installing to surging idle to just running really lean at idle. Um, the symptoms aren't always the same for everybody, but it definitely causes problems when you don't have the system plumbed right. Uh, like I said, this is the most common for 96 Explorer and your Fox Body Mustang stuff. Now we'll show you kind of how the later Explorer does it. All right, so the later Explorer just has a little nipple here inside the fresh air intake. And this runs down and to the little nipple on the uh, oil fill port. Um, doesn't really matter where you, you put it in your intake system as long as it's between the mass airflow sensor and the throttle body. So what do you do about the fresh air side if you've uh, changed your valve covers and you don't have any sort of nipple on the oil fill tube? Well, the trick I kind of went for with this one is the second PCV valve. Now what I've done is I've taken a drill and drilled out the ball and the spring and the rest of the guts, effectively making this nothing more than a hose fitting that will go into my valve cover. Most of your aftermarket valve covers have some sort of PCV provision. So if you can put a valve in there that's gutted, that will get you a fresh air source for your PCV system. Now some of your um, non-lightning manifolds other EFI manifolds that don't have a PCV valve in the back of the intake, um, you can put a functional PCV valve in one valve cover and a gutted one in the other, just like I did here for the fresh, for the fresh air system. Um, the only other thing you need to make sure of with that is that your oil fill cap is completely sealed. You don't have one that has any, si any style of a breather or vent underneath it that would uh, allow it to draw in fresh air. Um, the whole system needs to be sealed, otherwise the metering of the air through the mass airflow is completely pointless. All right, so hopefully that was kind of a simple enough explanation of uh, how the PCV system works. You know, simple valved manifold vacuum and then fresh air side needs to be metered between the MAF and the throttle body. Uh, part of the reason that's important is because the idle air tables they're set up in a way that they expect X amount of air to achieve X amount of RPM. And when you go and have a big 3 8 air opening like that, that allows in a lot of air that isn't metered. And uh, computer doesn't know it's getting it, and it kind of freaks idle out altogether. Um, like I said, sometimes it'll start and die. Sometimes it'll uh, sit there and surge. Um, it just depends on, on how the computer handles it. It seems like every configuration is different, but uh, those are probably the two most common symptoms of, of not having the system plumbed right. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I guess subscribe or something, or give me a like. Maybe someday YouTube will send me a check, but uh, I am planning on some more really good videos coming out here, um, kind of shorter ones like this. I'll, I'll eventually do the... Uh, 
the coyote standalone harness video. I'd just like to get a couple under, a couple more under my belt um, to where I have it memorized, sort of like I do the Explorer stuff and don't miss any steps. All right. Thanks, y'all. Take care.